Hello, and thank you for joining us. Our webinar topic today is part of our troubleshooting series. This webinar will cover purge and trap system leaks. Our presenter today is Amy Nutter, Senior VOC Applications Chemist for Teledyne Techmar. Feel free to submit questions during the webinar and Amy will respond via email after it's concluded. This webinar is being recorded and will be available within a few days. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to our presenter, Amy Nutter. Thank you, Shelley, for the introduction. Like she said, I'm Amy Nutter, Applications Chemist here at Teledyne Techmar. And today I will be discussing how to utilize the leak check diagnostic tool to identify leaks in your purge and trap system. We will cover a quick overview of the purge and trap technique and our products, common preventative maintenance tips to help fix leaks before they become a problem. And we will go through the TechLink leak check diagnostic tool that helps identify where the leak is coming from in the system, if you have one, and then we'll tie it all together at the end. So we have a lot to cover today. Uh, let's get into it. Now let's get into how purge and trap works. The theory of purging and sweeping the sample with an inert gas is called dynamic headspace theory. It sounds simple, but it's a very complex process. Purging a sample to extract analytes is a gas extraction. In purging a sample, the system is no longer at equilibrium. This is because the VOCs that move into the gaseous phase are continuously being removed by that purge gas. Continuously replacing that headspace causes a disequilibrium in that there's also always a higher concentration of VOCs in the liquid phase than in the gaseous phase, creating a net movement of VOCs from liquid to gas, extracting the VOCs from the sample more efficiently and improving on sensitivity. Then the gas is swept away onto the trap where it's concentrated and then released to the GC. A basic purge and trap consists of five main parts, a sparger, flow control, six port valve, analytical trap, and the heated transfer line. The sparger is the glassware on the front of the instrument that receives the liquid sample to be purged. Purging the sample extracts the VOCs by dispersing inert gas through the sample matrix for a preset time and flow. This flow is controlled by a mass flow controller or a pressure regulator that monitors and precisely controls the gas flow rates throughout the entire purge and trap process. From there, the six port valve directs the gas containing the analytes to the analytical trap for concentration. By back flushing carrier gas through the analytical trap, the six port valve directs the VOCs to the GC for separation and detection. The analytical trap is used to capture and release VOCs swept out of the sample by the purge gas. Trapping these VOCs helps create a smaller band of analytes traveling to the GC column producing greater signal to noise ratios and lower area to height ratios generating sharper peaks and better sensitivity and resolution. Once VOCs are captured, the trap is heated causing the VOCs to desorb and carrier gas is used to desorb VOCs off the analytical trap and carry them through the heated transfer line to the GC. Teledyne Techmar is the market leader for purge and traps in our nation, and we offer several different options. The Lumen Purge and Trap Concentrator, shown on the right, is our standalone waters only concentrator that can be paired with the Aquatech LVA auto sampler. And we also have the combined auto sampler and purge and trap concentrator, the Atomic XYZ, shown on the left, capable of analyzing soil, solids, and water samples. Today, we will be going in depth identifying leaks in the Atomic XYZ, but the same technique is uh, we can apply to the lumen, even with it having a much simpler flow and sample path. So here's some tips to identify leaks before they become a problem. There is a daily maintenance checklist, and on this checklist, one of the items is to perform a leak check. 
A carefully designed and faithfully executed preventative maintenance program is the best method for maintaining your instrument. It will help continue the performance standards of the unit and decrease the possibility of downtime. There is also a weekly maintenance checklist. This includes all of the items from the daily maintenance checklist. And then it also suggests that you go through your sample history log to verify the purge pressures, uh, that they stay consistent throughout daily runs. So some warning signs that you might have a leak in your system is if you see a steady or very fast drop in your purge and bake pressures when you review them in your history log, that means you might have a leak. Uh, you probably have a leak if you're missing or you have lower than usual responses on your front end compounds like your gases. Uh, this can be especially true if you're in soil mode, if that bile cap isn't on tight enough, and I'll show you an example of that. If your line linearity and reproducibility are off, uh, you could probably have a leaky drain valve, uh, which could lead to too much water in the sparger and not enough sample. Uh, if your sparger is draining very slow, you could have a massive leak. Uh, low to no sparge vessel bubbles can also be an indication of a leak. And if your purge and trap is connected to a GC that has a pneumatic inlet with pressure or flow that is electronically controlled, it will alert you during desorb. And that means that you probably have a leak in your trap. So here's the example of the leaking vial cap in soil mode. Uh, as you can see, a loose cap is shown uh, in the black, and then the tight vial cap is shown in the blue. So you lose a lot of response when your system isn't leak tight. And using TechLink's uh, leak check diagnostic tool uh, to perform your leak check, you usually want to run a leak check after changing the internal standard, the foam eliminator, if you use that, any glassware, the trap, if you loosen any fitting, uh, basically any time you replace any part, you want to perform a leak check. Uh, after turning your system on, after, being, after it being off for a while, maybe after the holiday break, you want to perform a leak check. And before performing a benchmark test, you definitely want to make sure that your system is leak tight for that. If not, the benchmark might say that it has a failed purge valve when it, that might not be the case. And then you're going down the rabbit hole of trying to fix something that isn't broken. So for the system leak check, uh, before you do get started, it is nice to have a, a handheld uh, leak detector while performing this leak check in case you do have a leak somewhere, uh, especially if you're using helium as a purge gas, because using it can be very helpful to track down your leak faster. So you want to go in, this is the main screen, you want to go into the tools, and then you, in tools, you want to go to leak check, and then you want to place a sealed empty vial in that auto sampler position one. You hit yes, and then it starts the automated leak check. Uh, it will move the vial up to the syringe to be pressurized. The mass flow controller is bringing in enough flow to pressurize the entire system to 27 PSI at 200 mils a minute. When it reaches that, the mass flow controller shuts off and it closes off exhaust ports like the vent valve and the drain valve. And so here's the tool in action. Uh, along with the instrument status screen showing that it's pressurizing up to 27 PSI. It'll spend about two minutes trying to pressurize the system to that. If it can't get that to that 27 PSI, the leak check will fail. And there's either a massive leak somewhere or the vial cap isn't on tight enough. Uh, also, if you have a 25 mil sparger, you will need to go into configuration 
uh, in the tool screen and then add more time to pressurize the system part of the leak check because the larger volume of the sparger, the longer it's going to take to pressurize all that space to 27 PSI. It will then stabilize the pressure for a short amount of time, and then it will hold that stabilized pressure for about 30 seconds. And as long as your delta stays within one, then your leak check passes. You can also change that delta in the configuration uh, section of the tools as well, but it's best not to make it larger than one. But if you want stricter requirements for passing, that's totally fine. You can make it less than one. So if this step fails and it starts a subsystem A leak check. So the subsystem A leak check it, that means there could be a leak in the mass flow controller, the bake valve, the purge valve, the purge select valve, the syringe valve, and the pressurized valve. It's checking all of those. So when it starts this subsystem A leak check, flow will enter the valve manifold through the bake valve and continue through the purge valve and the purge select valve. And this is all on the manifold here. This is the flow path of the leak check A, subsystem A. All right, then it stops within the manifold at the syringe valve and the pressurized valve. If there is a leak in subsystem A, it is most likely the sources of this leak is the MFC, the mass flow controller outlet fitting or the common port of the bake valve, which would be the source or the flow coming into the bake valve. So tighten those fittings, recheck those fittings. Uh, if it fails, uh, leak check A. So if subsystem A passes, the system is vented and repressurized. Um, to begin checking subsystem B. The test will essentially check uh, subsystem A again, but it also includes the six port syringe valve, also called the seven port valve, but it's right, it's right above the syringe on the instrument. Needle fittings and soil valve connections. So we've got all of subsystem A components, the syringe, the six port syringe valve, the transfer valve, the sample needle, and the soil valve. This test is similar to subsystem A. However, the syringe valve is actuated. The six port valve is rotated to the transfer line to allow uh, the vial to be pressurized. And to isolate a syringe, six port syringe valve, or the check valve fitting leak, uh, you wanna place a plug in that port five of the six port syringe valve and pressurize the system. If this passes, the sample vial is leaking. Uh, the sample needle fittings are leaking, or there's a leak in the soil valve, either the common normally open or normally closed port of the soil valve. So again, check those fittings, uh, get a new vial and start over, tighten it, tighten the vial cap, uh, and you can start over. If this fails and the leak is in subsystem B, the most likely sources of this leak are the lower connection between the six port syringe valve and the syringe. The check port, the check valve port on the side of the six port, port syringe valve. The commonly, the common or normally open port of the transfer valve. Or the internal standard injection ports on the valve manifold. If subsystem B passes, the system is vented again and repressurized to begin check of the subsystem C. This is a cumulative test, which will include subsystem A, subsystem B, 
but will also include the sparge vessel and the six port valve and the sample mount, the drain valve, and the vent valve. In this test, the soil valve is actuated to allow pressure to flow through the four-way T to the sparge vessel and through to the six port valve. If the leak is in subsystem C, the most likely sources of this leak are the sparge vessel fittings, the common or cross port leak of the drain valve, a common or cross port leak of the vent valve, sample mount fittings like the plug, the drain line, the transfer line, eliminator line if that's installed. the sample mount to the four-way T fittings and the sample mount weldments, or the six port valve, either a cross port leak, a loose fitting somewhere, or a loose rotor. So you definitely wanna check all of those places, tighten anything you can and rerun. If all of the subsystems pass the leak check, and, but the whole system continues to fail, the leak can be isolated to the following areas, either the loose fittings in the six port valve that I just talked about, or a potential cross port leak in the six port valve. Uh, could be the trap fittings, tighten those if you maybe just uh, change the trap or since the trap is heating and cooling constantly, you know. Those might loosen, might just want to tighten them a little bit, or the fittings on the moisture control system. So both of our Atomics XYZ and the Lumen have this TechLink leak check diagnostic tool. Uh, like I said, the same technique is used in the Lumen leak check, but it's a much less complex flow and sample path because it's a waters only purge and trap system. And I know tracking down a leak can sometimes feel very daunting, but hopefully this quick little walkthrough helped you understand the process behind the leak and check, the leak check a diagnostic tool a little bit better. And next time you have a leak, it's easier to fix. So just remember, anytime you change a part on your instrument, Perform a quick leak check before you start any of your samples. And you can find our library of application notes on our website under the resources tab. And if you wanna see more webinars like this one, we have all of our previous webinars on our website as well under the events tab or on our YouTube channel. Thank you for taking the time today to join me. Uh, please check out our website for those app notes and those webinars and to visit our online store. Also, you can follow us on social media too. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day.